Yes, indeed. Mishanich the Soda Marvel Bissimcha the Talmud says, Talmud in the practice of Ta'anit says, when the month of Adar enters, we increase in joy. As it says in the Megillah, the month that was reversed from grief to joy. But this demands, this demands a little explanation. Why the month? The miracle was on the day of Purim. Day before, day after. Why have we transformed that the entire month became a month of rejoicing? With many halachot related to it? Why is that? So to understand it, we need to understand a little bit deeper. The holiday of Purim in itself. What happened? Haman wanted to destroy the entire Jewish nation. Haman was looking for a moment where he felt, or he thought, he knew, the Jews are vulnerable. He was searching, trying to pinpoint when the Jewish people would be at the lowest point, and then he'll take advantage of that. When was this? It was after a millennium of freedom, independence, constant reliance on miracles. The first Bet HaMikdash. And suddenly they were exiled, now becoming helpless. No more miracles, depending on the laws of nature. That was a new experience for the Jewish people. The Bet HaMikdash, which represented God's presence, God's miraculous revelations, symbolizing the special relationship that we have with Hashem, vanished, was destroyed. So Haman says, now that this special relationship is not there, now is the time that I can, God forbid, do my final solution. But still Haman was not yet satisfied knowing this. He needed a bigger sign. He needed a sign from above logic. So he drew a lottery to find out what date will be appropriate. And he was the luckiest man. So he thought. The lottery came on the month of Adar. It says, whoa, that's the month where Moshe Rabbeinu passed away. The time where Moshe, their leader, passed away. That's a sign of their demise. But how wrong he was. And the reason for that is because, indeed, history is very much compared to our lives. Through the course of a lifetime, every person undergoes drastic changes. The newborn has virtually nothing in common with the independent, talented adult, which will eventually emerge years down the line. Even as an adult, we have the ups and downs. We have meaningful days, less meaningful days, successful days, less successful days, happy days, sad days. But there's one thing which is always there that never changes. And that is the very identity of that person. The same Baruch, the same Miriam, that was at the moment of birth, is the same Baruch and the same Miriam at the moment of leaving this, life, this world. So the same is true with the nation. We have ups and downs, spiritually and materially. But the identity, our essence, the fact that we are God's chosen nation, this never changes. And in fact, in a certain way, that relationship can even be seen, manifest itself more in times of downtime, so to say. In times of exile, 
There we can see that nevertheless, God interferes on our behalf. He always saves us. He's always there with and for us. So in those moments of low point, we can actually see the godly, tremendous relationship with us and us with him. So all the other holidays celebrate the highs of the nation. Commitment, Pesach, coming out of Egypt, Shavuos, we received the Torah. But Purim was in a time of down, so to say, of exile. Nevertheless, God showed his infinite bond with us and therefore it affects the entire month. So Haman wanted to destroy us in one day. We said, you know what? We'll celebrate the whole month. And indeed, this is the month of tremendous happiness. And through Simcha, Simcha of the imminent redemption, we will merit that this Purim we will celebrate already after Geula with Mashiach. And that would be nice to hear the beginner reading from Mordechai and greet Esther.